Hi, so today we're going to do some silver etching and it's going to be electro etching again with the current rather than with acid and um, the electrolyte that we're going to mix up to do that etching is going to be made from sodium nitrate this time rather than the normal salt that we used um, last time which was good for the copper and the brass. So here I've measured out 25 grams of sodium nitrate. Um, last time I used 100 grams of the sodium chloride, so the normal salt, um, but that's because we're doing it in a much bigger tub, whereas today I've got a teeny tiny tub, so I'm only going for a quarter the amount of salt. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this with some deionized water, so it's not got all the, the minerals and things in that normal tap water has, which could potentially interfere, and then I'm going to tip my sodium nitrate into that water. In one of the previous videos, we were talking about health and safety. So, so far I have popped some water, some deionized water into my little Tupperware. So at the minute I don't have it on any eye protection. I don't have it on any gloves. Um, but next I'm gonna add the, the sodium nitrate, the salt. And unlike regular salt, sodium nitrate can be an irritant. So I'm gonna be safe and pop some goggles on and some plastic gloves just by handling it. Another thing as well, um, as well as it potentially being an irritant to some people, it will stain your fingers brown, which we do not want. So, and also I've got all this on a plastic tray just in case, well, not just in case, because I will slop it everywhere because I am messy that way. So I've just made sure that the, the solution that I'm mixing up, if I spill it, it's gonna be easy for me to clean it up afterwards. Got my water, I've got my sodium nitrate that I've pre-measured and I'm just going to tip it in there. And as well, if you can see, I've um, labelled my tub because one of the really good things about um, electro etching compared to acid etching is the fact that most of the solutions will last many, many, many years. Um, so as long as you store them well. So it's good to label just so that you know how long they are, um, especially if you end up mixing up different batches of things or different sizes of tubs. But because of that, it just means that it, you don't have the same issues about having to throw it away where potentially you're like, oh, do I have to take it to the local tip? Or, you know, because anything that's been used to um, etch or take away metal particles, you don't want to be tipping down the sink. So I've added my sodium nitrate to my water, but can you see there's a layer of the sodium nitrate now at the bottom of the tub. So I need to leave this until that salt, that sodium nitrate completely um, gets absorbed, gets dissolved into the water, completely saturated. Otherwise it's not gonna work. So I you need to leave it at least a couple of hours. Um, you can stir it, you can give it a little swoosh if you want, but I, at least a couple of hours, ideally overnight. So what we're going to use today is the one that I was using over the weekend. So you can see the color of this. It's really brown, really sludgy. This is what happens as soon as you start using it. This is normal, um, doesn't look as pretty, <laughs> but that's gonna be ready to go. So I'm gonna show you how I hook it all up next. Okay, so if you remember from the previous video, um, I was using stainless steel for my anode and my cathode. And the point of the anode and the cathode was that the positive charge gets attached to the anode and that's where the energy flows in from. And then the negative charge gets attached to the cathode and that's where the energy flows back out. And that's how you make your circuit and goes around. The reason I was using stainless steel was because stainless steel um, anodes and cathodes are ones that you can use to etch various different metals so it just meant that I needed stainless steel and then I didn't have to worry about anything else but more traditionally your anode and your cathode would be made from the same metal that you're actually etching so for example in the last video when etching a piece of copper I would have had a copper anode and a copper cathode and when etching silver you would have a silver anode and a silver cathode um, because that means, in theory, you can just clip your charge to your actual piece that you're etching. So to show the difference, today I'm going to use a silver anode and cathode while etching silver. So here I have a little scrap piece, 
on the scrap part of silver, and this is going to be my cathode. So that's what we attach to the negative charge, like so. And the silver that I'm etching, I've taped a bit of silver wire to the back of it. And that's going to be my anode, which is attached to the positive charge, so which is normally the red wire, like so. And now I'm ready to pop these into the little etching bath. So I'm going to put one on one side. I'm going to make sure that the clips aren't sitting in the water in the um, electrolyte solution. And then I'm going to put the other one directly opposite it. So both bits of metal are directly opposite each other. The reason both bits of metal are directly op opposite each other is because, like I said, the charge is going to come in from the anode and out through the cathode to make that circuit. So if they're directly opposite each other, it's easy for it to do that. Whereas if this was over here somewhere and the energy is flowing out here, it's going to struggle to make that connection. I'm going to pop that back into position. So now they're ready to go and all I need to do is turn on the machine, turn on the power source and then check the volt. So at the minute it's at five and with the silver I do want to keep it a bit lower than when I was doing the, um, the normal salt etching with the copper just because it does kick up more sludge and is a bit dirtier but I'm going to turn it up a little bit. I'm going to aim for about seven I think. No matter what you do, just remember you don't want to go as high as 10. Just going to leave that for about 15 minutes because it's on a lower volt. And then I'll come back and check it and show you how it's got on. It's actually been etching for about half an hour now. So I'm going to switch it off. Take this out. And then I'm going to give it a good wash over in the sink. So I'm just going to take some nail polish remover and remove this nail polish now and you can see how it came out. There it goes, so it needs more cleaning but come out. I'm going to clean this up properly, give it a little polish and then I'll show you the um, the final pieces. That was Make and Unveiled with the electro etching. So it's a fairly new technique to me and like I say I've never come across a technique with so much contradictory information out there. Normally with most techniques whether you agree with it or not there's a this is how you do it and then there might be you know a couple of variations on that and they tend to be fairly basic variations but with this technique with electro etching there were so many variations <laughs> and nobody giving um, you know very few definitive answers for anything and even when people were giving definitive answers there'd be a huge amount of people then coming along and you know disagreeing with those or contradicting them or saying it doesn't work for them so i think a little bit like electroplating it is an art and it does need an awful lot of um, experimenting and trial and error and just seeing what works for you um, but like I said, I know a few of you are having a go, so let me know how you get on with it. The biggest thing that I found was previously I've done acid etching. So using acids to eat away at the metal. And like I said at the beginning of this project, one of the reasons that I don't like that is because I just don't like working with acids. I don't like handling acids. I don't like the hassle of then having to... Um, Get rid of them because you cannot pull them down the sink anything that's got metal particles floating around of it you do not want that getting in the waterways um it's just so electro etching 
provides a really really safe way safe alternative of doing it and in some cases it's a much quicker in fact pretty much in all cases i found a much quicker way of doing it but it's not as reliable yet but like i say i think it's all down to cracking the exact combination of bolts and amps and solutions and then all that will change every time you change the size of your piece and any little variable so it's definitely something that needs a lot of experimentation i found electro etching the copper um, and brass was very similar, gave a very similar effect to um, acid etching. So it gave a nice clean edge and the, the bonus, apart from it being an awful lot safer, was it took minutes, it took about 15 minutes this one um, and it looks almost as deep as this acid piece that took about, I don't know, about 45 minutes an hour plus. And silver was a whole different ball game. That's posed a lot of problems. <laughs> um, so I'll show you close-ups of all these. But this was a little butterfly ring that I've made using a card sticker as a resist. And it's come out quite nice, but it's not particularly deep and it's got a lot of texture from where the etching happened. The same with this little leaf pendant. And that was done using the PMP &P papers. So the ones that you iron onto your metal. Here's that little fern leaf. So that was etched by photocopying a fern design. It was that one onto PMP paper. So the press and peel paper. It's got to be a laser photocopier. The instructions come on the paper. Um, but basically what you do is you photocopy the image onto it, cut it out and then iron it onto your metal. And that's what acts as a resist. Here is little butterfly ring it's not showing up very well in this light I'm afraid but that was done with the little butterfly stickers and then here's the one from earlier so that was the layers of nail polish and then scratched into it the copper and the brass have etched more successfully. So this was using the normal salt water to, to etch with rather, rather than the um, sodium nitrate that we did with the silver. And it's just given a much cleaner etch and also it was a lot quicker. This one was only in for about 15 minutes or so. So presumably it could go quite a bit deeper if it was left a bit longer. Here was the original test piece. Again, you can see different resists there. So we had the nail polish that was scratched into, stickers, Sharpie, more little stickers. Lots of craft supplies being used. And here was the original acid etched one. If you've been having a go at home or if it's something that you already do, let me know if you've got any hints or tips, how you got on, anything in particular you struggled with. Um, so like I say, it is a technique that shows an awful lot of promise, but I know um, similarly from when I've done electroforming in the past and electroplating, you really do need to sort of get your geek on a bit in terms of volts and amps and getting the exact right combination of things to get it to work successfully. And that's the sort of thing that I rarely have the patience to do. <laughs> but because I like it so much and because um, it's so much safer than acid etching I am going to persevere and I'm going to order some um, alternative um, minerals and salts to use as electrolytes for the silver to try and get more successful results so I'll let you know how I get on with that in the future but thank you for following the project and um, I hope you're doing really well bye